everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today we're going to look at a 1973 Martin D35. I have already removed both the bridge and the pick guard. Both were not glued, fully glued down. So the uh, plastic that the pick guard is made of shrinks over time. Solvents that is made with uh, tend to leach out slowly. And as those solvents leach out, it shrinks. And as it shrinks, it curls. It can cause other problems. There's a small crack here in the top that is um, a result of that pulling on the wood. And another one developing here. And the top actually has a cup to it from that curling action. So the first thing I do is to get the heat gun out to soften the plastic as I remove it. And then once I remove it, I continue to heat it to make it pliable so I can flatten it out. And that's what this is. So it's been sitting in here for a couple days. And here's the big reveal. Let's see what we got here. What I'm hoping to find is a nice flat pick guard that I can reuse. And we also have to see really how much it has shrunk and see how that will fit on the uh, footprint. You can see where um, it had lifted and curled right here. That, that line there was a major curl. And it's still curling up a little bit and on the front, but in general it's flat and in my mind quite usable. So we got that going for us. It has shrunk to a certain extent, but um, in my mind that shrinkage is minimal enough to still reuse it. Um, just because I love the look of the old pick guard there. It just fits with the rest of the instrument so nicely. So that was successful. Now let's look at the bridge. When I got the guitar, a good 80 70 percent of the bridge was still reglued, but there was a fairly large gap along the back edge. I heated it and uh, separated the bridge from the top of the glue line. It came off pretty clean because it was sitting like that for such a long time and that slow process of the bridge coming up. The top has changed shape a bit and the bridge itself has changed shape a bit. So what I'm left with is it just doesn't fit, sit on there very well at all. So I have to take both of these surfaces and clean them up. This tool here is a cabinet scraper and I'm going to use it to clean up the bottom of that bridge. Every time you use it, you got to uh, consider sharpening. Got a nice flat um, file here that I'm just going to clean this up with, uh, square to this edge as possible. Clean that burr on the side up. Now I'm going to take this burnishing tool, set it on the edge, and lean it over just a little bit, and then run it across there to create a little burr on the edge there. I'm going to do it on both sides. I wish that you could run your thumb over the edge here like I am right now and feel that little burr because it's a beautiful thing. I'm ready to go. All right now I'm going to clamp this bridge up over here and begin scraping this surface. Uh, what I'm looking to do is just clean up all this uh, old glue and then start to create a surface that will allow the bridge to mate to the top better. Um, I'm looking to create a curve in this direction, but also a curve in this direction. And then I have to continually match it to the top to see which areas I need to um, take off to make that mate. These two calls are made to fit right there on the wings of the bridge. They're actually for clamping the bridge on. I put these face up here. My bridge goes on there and that allows me then to get a nice, I'll probably have to adjust the tension on this. There we go. So I'm able to take these really fine shavings off there and clean that surface off pretty nicely. Right off the bat, it, it, uh, it definitely is already starting to fit quite a bit better, but there's a, still a ton of rock. I haven't done anything to this surface yet. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just do a quick sanding of this to clean up the, the major anomalies here. This little 
tiny tool here, which is just a little block of wood with a handle, on, uh, a sort of finger handle on it, and a piece of double stick uh, sandpaper. It allows me to do very small surfaces here very accurately. The top tends to move over 50 years time, like this. It sinks in the front of the bridge and bulges up in the back. And that creates a situation where this bridge is fitting on there, where this part of the bridge is touching, the, is fit to the top reasonably, but these two wings have now sprung up in the air. And on the front edge, I get the opposite, where there's a gap here in the middle, but these two corners are fit to the top. The fit has already improved majorly. I see the middle sitting nicely, the back edge of the two wings sitting up, and on the front, small gap in the middle, and the two corners fitting there. So I'm gonna try and work that off. So what I'm trying to do is to maintain a very slight cup in the fit, in, in the fit of the uh, bridge here, the shape of the bridge here. The reason for that is when I, I don't wanna make it completely flat because when I go to glue it on, I have to create some space for the glue. I don't want to squeeze the glue completely out. But I also want the edges to fit down really tight and have a really good clean look of the two edges meeting. So I'm creating that small cup to give the room some, the glue some room so I don't squeeze it all out completely and to get that edge fit. So I'm trying to do that and maintain that while I'm trying to Get, take material off this back edge here and probably off these two corner wings. Now I'm gonna check what's going on here with my straight edge and the backlit situation. Looking to see how that cup, how, how, how well I've created that cup. I see a couple of spots here in the middle that need to be taken down. Different kind of scraper, quite a bit thicker, so I can't manipulate it the same way I can in this one. But it allows me to Get into that. Get into the center area of the bridge and make sure I have my have that cup. All right. Now I see that I have that cup nicely and maybe a little too much, so I can reduce the cup because I only want it to be a minimal, and work the back part of this bridge, the belly, to remove some more material and improve this fit. See what we got here. Minimal rock at this point. And I can see why, because the two corners of the wings are starting to fit down on there pretty nicely. And that gap in the middle is starting to go away. This is my bridge reglue kit, which contains any number of little tools that I use for this job, for the fitting. What I have here, you know, a bolt with a wing nut and some washers. I'm putting these bolts through the uh, outer uh, bridge pin holes, the low E and the high E string holes, that will allow me to place this bridge exactly where I want it to be. I'm looking to see that the bridge fits its original footprint as closely as possible. Now I can take my X-Acto knife and scribe precisely around the bridge. Got that nice outline there. You can see that little scribe line. There. There you have it. In the shop, fitting a bridge to the top. A little bit of pick guard work on this nice old 1973 Martin D35. Thanks for joining me today. Like and share us on Facebook, and we'll see you in a few weeks.